This session introduces Quake W in the Geo Studio 2007 software package. Quake W is all about doing a geotechnical earthquake engineering type of an analysis. As we will see in this session, Quake provides one component of the earthquake analysis. The purpose of this introductory session is to provide a general overview of all the issues that are involved in an earthquake engineering analysis and to illustrate the types of analysis that are available in GeoStudio 2007. To present this overview, I will illustrate the various types of analysis with references to particular case histories. In a geotechnical earthquake engineering analysis, there are many different types of issues to consider. One of the obvious ones, obviously, is the motion, movement, and inertial forces that occur during the shaking. We the motion is easy to visualize, and so is the movement. But what we are primarily interested in during the motion is the inertial forces. What we mean by inertial forces is that we have a force that is equal to mass times acceleration. So we need to know the acceleration that occurs during the earthquake shaking in order to be able to compute this force. A second issue is the generation of excess pore water pressures. Obviously, if the pore pressures go up, the effect of stress goes down and there is a loss of strength. But there is another component to the strength which we will talk about in considerable detail in the second Quake W session, and it is the potential reduction of the shear strength of the soil. And, and jumping ahead here a little bit, the friction angle phi of the soil might get reduced through some sm lower value, and it's this reduction in the shear strength parameters that is of utmost importance when we talk about shear strength loss. Then there is the issue of the effect of the motion and inertial forces on stability itself. The uh, inertial forces may be adequate to make a slope unstable. The excess pore pressures may cause the shear strength to decrease, which can lead to instability. And then also there is obviously the issue of a possible shear strength loss or reduction of shear strength parameters, which also may lead to instability. Another issue that comes to the fore during an earthquake engineering analysis, particularly if there has been some liquefaction, is the redistribution of excess pore water pressures and the redistribution of stresses within the embankment, for example. And all of this may be associated with strain softening. And a lot of this could happen after the shaking has stopped. One of the key points of interest, of course, during an earthquake engineering analysis is the permanent de deformation. Sometimes the permanent deformation may be tolerable. Other times the permanent deformation will be very large and cause severe damage when there is extensive liquefaction. What is of great interest is that in many cases the permanent deformation occurs after the shaking has stopped. This has tremendous implication. And the main implication is that the inertial forces, the inertial forces are not the direct cause of the permanent deformation. And we will talk about this in considerable detail during these Quake W sessions. Also, 
The post-earthquake deformation is caused by a redistribution of the excess pore pressures and the potential associated loss in the shear strength. So not only do we have to look at what's happening during the shaking itself, but we have to look at what is happening after the earthquake shaking has stopped. Generally, we can categorize the permanent deformation into two groups. There is the obvious case where we have a total loss of stability and we have flow slides. These are obviously the catastrophic events and the intent and desire is to avoid this at all possible cost. But then there are the cases where we only have a partial loss of stability. And when we have a partial loss of stability, the deformations can be significant, but they are not sufficient to cause complete collapse of the structure. And so the key question that we need to answer is what will the structure look like after the earthquake shaking has stopped? And more importantly, in many, many cases, is will the structure be repairable after the earthquake shaking has stopped? And if the deformation are such that the earth, that the structure is repairable, that is, of course, key to the analysis. And knowing if we have complete loss of stability is another one of the key issues. So the problem of an, a geotechnical earthquake engineering analysis is multifaceted. It requires various types of analyses. We cannot cover, we cannot cover all the facets with one numerical model. So one of the main purposes of this introductory session is to introduce all the issues, as I've already said, and then to show you the various types of analysis are required and to show how this can be accomplished with the analyses that are available in GeoStudio.